October 4th, 1884. It is all the same, drawing, painting, modelling, the irresistible desire to copy any beautiful object which strikes the eye. Why cannot one be content to look at it? I cannot rest, I must draw, however poor the result. And when I have had a bad time come over me, it is a stronger desire than ever. August the 29th, 1905. I sat on a big stone with my back against the wall. Down below, sloping steep, was the little field of red gold barley, golden and green, for the rain had come and brought up the clover, and there was a lighter patch beside each stook where they had been shifted. I remember how the valley had looked with the black poplars, how their trunks and branches stood up, first across the farm, the marshes, the sea and the sky, holding the landscape together. Lucy scrambled up the stile with a bundle in her hand and then she turned to say goodnight and to thank the washerwoman. What a very odd thing. Mrs Tiggywinkle had not waited for either thanks or the washing bill. She was running, running, running up the hill, and where was her white frilled cap, and her shawl, and her gown, and her petticoat, and how small she'd grown, and how brown, and how covered in prickles? Why, Mrs Tiggywinkle was nothing but a hedgehog. Thank God I have the seeing eye. That is to say, as I lie in bed, I can walk step by step on the fells, seeing every stone and flower and patch of bog and cotton pass where my old legs will never take me again. As I walked by myself and talked to myself, myself said unto me, Through many changing seasons these tales have walked and talked with me. They were not meant for printing. I have left them in the homely idiom of our old North Country speech. I send them on the insistence of friends beyond the sea.